Hello teacher, hello students, welcome to today's lesson on official insurance and commercial documents used in foreign trade. In our previous lesson, we discussed transport documents used in foreign trade. Transportation document indicates that the goods which are delivered to the named shippers, airlines or transporters must be carried to a named port, airport, or place of delivery. The following transport documents are being used at present in international trade. Mates receipt and bill of loading. Bill of loading comprises of ocean bill of loading, inland bills of loading, airway bill, and parcel post receipts. Doing business globally requires great knowledge of the proper trade documentation as well as the resources to execute this. There are many documents involved in international trade. In today's lesson, we will learn about the following documents. Certificate of Insurance Certificate of Origin Consular Invoice Certificate of Health and Packing List It is therefore important to understand the role of each document and their requirements in the international trade. First, let us discuss about the Consular Invoice. A Consular Invoice is a commercial invoice that receives a seal or cited, signed, and stamped by the consul of the importing country resident in the exporting country. The consular invoice, along with other documents, will be sent by the exporter to the importer. A consular invoice serves to exercise control over imports and help prevent over and under invoicing. It is an important document for setting customs duty. The purpose of the document is to facilitate the calculation of the custom duties by the authorities of the importing country without taking more time. It is given by the trade consul of the importing country residing in the exporting country. Students, Certificate of Health is the second important element in the official document. If you export agricultural or animal products, livestock or endangered plants or animals, you need to be aware of certain rules and procedures. Certificate of Health is generally needed in purchase of foodstuffs, hides and skins, livestock, and in the use of packing materials. The health certificate confirms that the shipment meets the required health, veterinary, 
and sanitary standards. Now let's proceed to insurance document that is the third document in the international trade. Insurance policy certificate is when the exporter arranges for the insurance of the goods against the usual perils of the sea. Every export sale should be covered by insurance. An insurance policy is an insurance document evidencing insurance has been taken out on the goods shipped and it gives full details of the insurance coverage. An insurance certificate certifies that the shipment has been insured under a given open policy and is to cover loss of or damage to the cargo while in transit. Students, who will cover the cost of the insurance policy? The importer or the exporter? Who provides the coverage depends on the term of contract used. The terms of contract between the importer and the exporter should define the responsibilities for arranging insurance coverage while the goods are in transit and what risks are to be covered. The following reasons compel traders to contract transport insurance. Protection against financial losses resulting from damage, pilferage, theft, and non-receipt of entire or part of a consignment, and protection against financial claims that can be made against the owner of goods on board a vessel in case of a declared general average or the goods themselves being undamaged. Now I want you to do the following exercise by discussing with the student sitting next to you. You have two minutes. Get ready. List and briefly describe the basic information that must be contained in the insurance policy certificate. Students, have you listed the basic information that must be contained in the insurance policy certificate? Good. Let's now provide you the answer so that you can compare it with your responses. The insurance policy certificate must contain the following information. 
full name of the policyholder or the insured, name of insurance company providing coverage, type of insurance, example, commercial general liability, workers' compensation, and automobile, and limits. Policy number and effective date, date and description of operation. Students, finally, let's discuss the types of documents included as commercial documents in international trade. This document consists of certificate of origin and packing list. First, let's see the definition of certificate of origin, its importance, its components, and the body who is responsible to issue it. Certificate of origin is a very useful document to save custom or import duties. It enables the importer to get advantage of special treatment. Now, I want you to do the following exercise by discussing with your groupmates. You have two minutes. Explain how certificate of origin can be used to enable the importer to get an advantage of special treatment. Students, have you explained how certificate of origin can be used to enable the importer to get an advantage of special treatment? Good. Let's now provide you the answer. As a general rule, the rate of import duty is not same for imports from all countries. The goods imported from some other countries are subject to less import duty. Thus, to get the benefit of saving import duty, the importer can use the certificate of origin because the government of importing country grants concession in import duty to the importer on the basis of certificate of origin. Students, I hope you have understood the definition and importance of certificate of origin. Now let's proceed to the components and the body responsible to issue certificate of origin. 
The certificate of origin should include the name address of the exporter, the manufacturer if different, the importer, a description of the goods and the signature, and the seal of the authorizing organization. This certificate is generally issued by the Chamber of Commerce or Export Promotion Council or Trade Association or such other recognized body on behalf of the government. It is issued to the exporter. Students, the last component of commercial document is packing list. Where there are several packages in one consignment, an invoice is usually accompanied by a packing list which details the contents of the package and may also show their weights and measurements. The exporter must prepare a packing list showing description of items, number of containers or boxes with specification of net weight and gross weight, etc., to enable the importer of the goods to check the shipment. The purpose of packing list is to identify the list of goods for dispatch. Now I want you to do the following exercise by discussing with your groupmates. You have two minutes. What is the difference between Certificate of Origin and Certificate of Health? Students, have you discussed the distinction between Certificate of Origin and Certificate of Health? Good. Let's now provide you the answer. Certificate of Origin is a commercial document which states the country origin of goods. It is a proof about the origin of goods exported. It certifies that certain goods are manufactured within a specific country only. Whereas Certificate of Health is an official document which is needed in the purchase of foodstuffs, hides and skins, livestock, and in the use of packing materials. It is issued by the recognized health authorities in the exporting countries. Students, 
In today's lesson, we have discussed official documents, insurance document, and commercial documents. Let me summarize what we have discussed so far. We discussed that the international trade documents may be classified under transport documents, official documents, insurance document, and commercial documents. We have also seen the purposes of each trade document. Insurance policy certificate is used to ensure common perils. The certificate of origin is very useful document to save custom or import duties because of preferential treatment to the goods of friendly countries. In our next lesson, we will discuss foreign terms of payments, letter of credit. This brings us to the end of our lesson today. See you next time in another program. Until then, goodbye teacher. Goodbye students.